bell chime Fireman Sam is there on time Putting on his coat and hat In less than seven seconds flat He's always on the scene Fireman Sam and his engine's bright and clean Fireman Sam you cannot ignore Sam is the hero next door Driving down the busy streets Greeting people that he meets Someone could be in a jam So hurry, hurry, Fireman Sam So move aside, wait, wait, come on! For Fireman Sam, cause he's gonna save the day Fireman Sam, he's the one we adore Sam is the hero next door When he's fighting fires Hello everyone, I know it has been a while due to motivation loss and stuff and whatever But anyway in this video, I thought it would be interesting to talk about Fireman Sam, but mainly why its appeal and originality is appealing to people, and why it's more than just a kids show. Well, originally, anyway. I will also discuss on what makes it different to other kids shows, good ones and bad ones. So anyway, let's go through what the core appeal of Fireman Sam is. First off, it's settings. As we all know, the show takes place in a small town in South Wales called Ponty Pandy. What makes it good and interesting is that it's set in a real life setting. It isn't set in a big city location or a tropical island or anything, it's set in a rural location where everyone is quite familiar with each other and has a community which has good interactions, bad interactions, etc. And the characters in the setting is what makes this setting fun to watch. The tone the show has is definitely reminiscent to a sitcom or soap opera like Only Falls and Horses or EastEnders. The characters in this environment act like real people. They don't act wacky or jumpy to seem entertaining for little kids. Like for example, Trevor acts like an older bloke who's friendly and willing to help others while being a bit of a quote unquote ladies man. Yum, Bella. Mamma mia! You're beautiful when you're angry. And Dillis is definitely like a snobby woman who likes to gossip about other people's business. And even says stuff that might be controversial. These Italians, so dramatic they are, should stick to spaghetti, see? Safer. The characters can have a laugh and jokes with each other, and also some annoyance towards each other. This makes them feel more down to earth and feel like someone like your brother, your mother, your aunt, etc. On the topic of tone, it definitely doesn't play down to children. In episodes, emergencies occur, which can either be soft or a matter of life and death situation. The soft emergencies can be quite funny on how ridiculous these situations can be, like getting a head stuck in between park gates or losing a tire that's becoming a runaway. And sometimes they can be relatable situations, like accidentally burning some cooking or getting stuck on a roof or tree. And then, the more serious ones can be cinematic to watch, in a way that keeps a slice of life feeling. A strong example of this is in the Christmas special Snow Business, where Sarah and James get stuck on an icy pond that's breaking and the fire service has to save them. It sounds like a dark and creepy concept for a kids show, I will admit it, but it was dealt with so much seriousness and realism that the scene feels like a big climax from an older audience centred show or movie. It definitely makes you root for the fire service into saving the victims of dangerous situations. Also, the next point I will address is the writing that is brilliantly done by Rob Lee, who did the storylines, and Nia Kydiog. When writing episodes and stories for books, they did not treat the child audience like morons and gave them some respect like betraying the fire safety messages through storyline and character arcs. Apart from the episode Safe with Sam, which was intended to be a public information film, they never really deliberately said, NEVER FIDDLE WITH THE OVEN, or something similar. The story plays out like a normal day someone would experience, and makes the learning experiences more subtle and fun for the kids watching. And this makes re-watching the episodes as a teen or adult more enjoyable, as similar to something like a Pixar or top tier DreamX film, you can appreciate the show for something new. Another mature thing they incorporated was a love triangle between Trevor, Dillis and Bella. 
Dillis would usually flirt with Trevor while he was more interested in Bella. And another evidence of immaturity is in the episode Steel Under Par. This is centred around Station Officer Steel on a path towards retirement and everyone feeling different emotion towards it. It shows an importance towards a character in the show, but carries a serious topic to children in a way that is fun to watch, but acceptable for its message. A similar point I would like to say is that it lets the characters' interactions play out normally. This is just for comparison sakes, but other shows like Postman Pat and Thomas the Tank Engine have a narrator do the talking for the children. Fireman Sam, on the other hand, lets the characters talk like they're actually interacting. Like, for instance, scenes would have them have an actual conversation, or let a character give commands, and then have a person say, Sam was very cross about this person for us. I know the show was originally told by one person, like Pat or Thomas, but the man who did it, John Alderton, was pretty good at giving the characters distinctive voices, without them sounding too similar or sounding like wacky cartoon characters. He gave enough differences for them to feel like individual characters. Speaking of sound, the theme song and whole soundtrack is well made, thanks to composers Ian Lawson and Ben Hennigan. The theme was composed to sound like a fire engine siren or alarm, the sound's quite musical, and Maldron Pope and the Symphony Rock Instrumental makes a the theme song sound like an actual song from the 80s or something Paul Collins or another artist would sing at the time. Plus, the soundtrack done for the entire show is really well thought out and fits the tone and scenes perfectly. Another major aspect of the show that was great was the character designs. The designs were mostly based off people from the 80s in the UK but the way the original fire service was designed was so smart and it made them look distinctive. As something we all know, people can look nearly identical while wearing uniforms, so it was important to Rob Lee to give the main firefighters features unique to them. For example, the main three firemen, Sam, Elf and Steel, have features like you can tell it's very specifically with their helmets on. For Sam, it was his hairstyle, as it stuck out of his helmet with a darker brunette hair colour. For Elvis, it was his height that made him stood out, as his sleeves poked out of his tunic. And for Steel, it was his different coloured helmet, as he was the station officer. A reason why the CGI seasons ruined the charm is they took away most of the firefighters' main distinctive features, which made them look way too similar in full gear and resemble some sort of clone army. Giving the characters distinctive features would make them look recognisable and have people go, I can tell it's Sam because of his hair, and so on. But now, I would like to discuss a major factor for my personal opinion on what makes the original version of Fireman Sam appealing. And that is because it may have possibly given us a perfect example of a male role model. So let me explain. For example, what comes across your mind when you hear the word hero? You may think of someone in comic books, TV shows, cartoons or movies, who tends to save people from a villain, someone with a cape, flies, has muscles and mostly an ego. But we tend to forget what a real life hero could be, aka a firefighter. They are real life people who put their life on the line to save others, people who have interesting quirks or personality traits, people who are just like us. And this leads to the hero next door himself, Fireman Sam. So what makes Sam a quote-unquote real-life hero? Well, first off, we all know he's a fireman. He often puts his life in danger to save others. He's selfless and brave, and often puts others before him. Another thing is he's not particularly portrayed as being muscular or buff. His face is more rounder in design, and could actually be slightly on the plus side, if you know what you mean. Nextly, he has no romantic second half or typical family, but spends time with his niece and nephew, Sarah and James. And lastly, he has interesting personality quirks, as outside of work, or sometimes on duty at the fire station, he can be quite clumsy and can make mistakes. And he also has a hobby, which is inventing. He can create things out of ordinary things like metal tins, buttons and wires. But this could lead to something interesting, like a gadget that helps you pick out potatoes, or a bin that helps out with recycling, or a robot that could act like a butler. But in most cases, 
these inventions can go berserk or malfunction and end up breaking, which makes Sam unperfect. Here's the key. That's ironically perfectly okay to have these features. You may ask why. Why is this important? Well, let me explain. This might be a bizarre comparison, but let's take a character like Shrek, for example. He is portrayed as snarky, often stubborn, and even quote-unquote unattractive. This would lead him to believe that he isn't worthy and deserving to have friendship or a romantic second half, as, pe as people treated him poorly his whole life. However, this is not the case, and he eventually finds a best friend and a wife, and lives happily ever after. This is important as it teaches both kids and adults that no matter what you look like in any shape, size or form, you are worthy as a human being and are important. And the features original Sam that I described as important is because it helps children and even adults feel more comfortable for who they are. They have someone who is a real hero, someone who looks out for others but can often make mistakes and have imperfect features. It makes us realise that this is features of being human and that's okay. A reason why I think CGI Sam goes against this model is that the majority of his features he originally had is taken away. He looks more muscular, his quiff that made him unique in the fire service is gone, he doesn't spend as much time with his family and relatives and that he lost his interest in inventing for some reason. This makes him look more like a stereotypical corporate idea of a hero and role model and it goes against on what made the original version of Sam so unique and creative. But anyhow, in a social media driven modern world where looks and behaviours are glorified in a way, people can learn a thing or two from Sam, and that is to be someone that is unique and definitely be who you want to be. I'm not going to go into even more depth on what makes CGI Fireman Sam appalling, but what is it truly that makes Fireman Sam great to others? Well, for most points of views from other people, the storytelling. The music and the overall theme and tone is what makes original Fireman Sam appealing. And that is something I agree strongly on. And I'd say something which makes it appealing is that it's something you can rely on for comfort and assurance. I definitely remember in 2022, I was in a bad path of life, with secondary school and world events and such. Fireman Sam was a charming show that made me entertain and distracted me from horrible aspects of life. Even as a child, who was born in 2006, as a FYI, out of the three versions of Fireman Sam, of the first four seasons, fifth season and the CGI reboot, it was always the first four seasons I would watch of it over and over again and reenact with toys. Considering the crap state of the world currently and how the show has been tarnished and milked to death nowadays, it will always be a pure joy to watch this random English Welsh kids show from the 1980s and have it as a fun aspect of life. <laughs>